Ladies and gentlemen, prepare to embark on an extraordinary voyage through the life and remarkable achievements of a true luminary, Sir Isaac Newton. As we step into the world of this enigmatic figure, we are reminded of his profound words. If I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Welcome to Unveiling the Enigma, Sir Isaac Newton's Remarkable Journey. Join us as we delve into his captivating journey, a narrative woven with brilliance, discovery, and the relentless pursuit of knowledge. With a quote that echoes through the ages, we invite you to uncover the secrets of a towering intellectual giant. Our tale begins in the quaint English village of Wollstorp Manor, where on Christmas Day in the year 1642, a premature and fragile baby entered the world. This was Isaac Newton, destined to reshape the very foundations of science and mathematics. Isaac's father, a humble farmer, passed away just three months before his birth leaving him to face a challenging life from the very start. So small was he at birth that it was said he could fit inside a quart mug, a miraculous survival story. However, Isaac's early life was marked by hardship. When he was just three years old, his mother remarried and moved to a nearby village, leaving him in the care of his grandparents. This abandonment left indelible scars on his psyche. As a testament to these early struggles, in later years, Newton would compile a list of his own sins, including a harrowing confession of threatening to burn his own parents and their house. His challenging childhood foreshadowed a life marked by profound introspection and a relentless quest for truth. Isaac was a uniquely curious child, more interested in the mechanics of the world than making friends. At the tender age of nine, he displayed an early sign of his future brilliance by carving a sundial, a testament to his budding aptitude for invention and precision. By the age of 12, he embarked on a new chapter in his life by enrolling at a local grammar school, where his signature still etches a windowsill, a poignant reminder of his humble beginnings and early potential. His mother's initial contemplation of pulling him out of school was an idea that filled Newton with dread. However, the schoolmaster's persuasive intervention changed the course of history. This seemingly small decision set in motion a chain of events that would lead to the blossoming of one of the greatest minds in human history. Newton's thirst for knowledge, combined with his unwavering determination, propelled him forward in his academic pursuits. As a university student, Newton's early years as an undergraduate were unremarkable. He diligently studied the works of ancient Greek philosophers, but found himself questioning their theories. In his notebook, written in Latin, he penned the words, Plato is my friend, Aristotle is my friend, but my best friend is truth. These words foreshadowed his lifelong commitment to seeking truth through rigorous scientific experimentation. But it wasn't until a series of extraordinary circumstances unfolded that Newton's journey would take an unexpected turn. In 1665 at the age of 22, shortly after receiving his bachelor's degree, the bubonic plague swept across Europe, bringing the continent to its knees. This pandemic forced Newton to return to his childhood home in Wollstorp Manor, where he would spend the next two years in isolation. Little did he know that these years of seclusion would lead to his most astonishing breakthroughs. As we reflect on this period of isolation, we can't help but wonder, did you, like Newton, discover new passions or achieve remarkable feats during the recent pandemic lockdown? Sometimes, even in the midst of adversity, great discoveries and personal growth can flourish. It was during this period of isolation that Newton used a simple prism to conduct a groundbreaking experiment. He discovered that white light could be separated into the colors of the rainbow, an observation that challenged the prevailing belief of the time. Aristotle's theory had held that color was a mix of black and white, but Newton's prism shattered this notion and paved the way for a revolution in our understanding of light. Newton's thirst for clarity and precision extended beyond his experiments with light. He sought to improve the accuracy of telescopes, leading him to invent the reflecting telescope, which used mirrors instead of lenses. This invention provided a more accurate image, 
and played a crucial role in advancing our understanding of the cosmos. Outside the walls of his family home stood an apple tree, a tree that would become the stuff of legend. While there's no evidence to suggest that an apple actually fell on Newton's head, it was beneath this tree that he contemplated the force that governs the universe, gravity. Newton pondered whether the same force that caused an apple to fall to the ground could reach all the way to the moon. His insight into gravity and its role in celestial motion would shape the course of scientific history. The mathematics of the time lacked the sophistication required to determine the motion of celestial bodies. Undaunted by this limitation, Newton embarked on a mathematical journey that would revolutionize science. He invented his own form of mathematics, known as calculus. In a world where the study of mathematics and physics was limited by antiquated techniques, Newton's creation of calculus was nothing short of a seismic shift in human understanding. It was as if he had unearthed an entirely new language for describing the workings of the universe, providing a profound tool to explore the motions of planets, the laws of motion, and much more. To put this achievement into perspective, imagine the advent of the internet 20 years ago. Newton was on fiber optic broadband, whilst the rest of the world was on dial-up. Back then, the world had not fully grasped the transformative potential of this interconnected digital realm. Just as the internet reshaped the way we communicate, access information, and conduct business, Newton's calculus reshaped the way we understand the fundamental laws governing the physical world. Yet, the magnitude of his achievement remained concealed for years. A dispute would later arise over the invention of calculus when German mathematician Gottfried Leibniz published his work in 1684. Newton claimed he had done the same work some 20 years earlier, but had kept it private due to a fear of scrutiny. This debate over the invention of calculus would persist, but most historians agree that Newton and Leibniz discovered this mathematical masterpiece independently. Newton's calculus not only laid the foundation for modern physics and mathematics, but also exemplified his exceptional ability to see further into the mysteries of the universe than anyone before him. In 1667, when we was 24, after the end of the plague, Newton returned to the University of Cambridge as a fellow. He was a relentless workaholic, often forgetting to eat as he delved deeper into his research. Just two years later, still in his mid-twenties, he achieved one of the most prestigious academic positions in the world, the Lucasian Professor of Mathematics. He succeeded Isaac Barrow in this esteemed role at the University of Cambridge, taking up the position at the remarkable age of 26. The Lucasian professorship has a storied history, with luminaries like Stephen Hawking later occupying the post. Notably, Michael Cates, who has held the position since his appointment in 2015, continues the legacy of this distinguished professorship. However, Newton's indifference to his students was apparent. There are accounts of him lecturing to an empty room when no one showed up for class. His true passion lay in his research. In 1687, Sir Isaac Newton published his magnum opus, The Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy, commonly referred to as Precipia. This monumental work stands as one of the most important ever written. In Precipia, Newton laid out his law of universal gravitation and his three laws of motion. The first law describes how an object behaves when no force acts upon it, the second relates the mass of an object to the force required to move it, and the third posits that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Newton had revolutionized our understanding of the physical world, but his intellectual pursuits extended beyond science. Newton's life was marked by complexity and paradox. While he is celebrated as one of the greatest scientists in history, he also contributed significantly to theology. He believed that the Bible held the key to understanding the natural world and spent considerable time studying holy texts, believing that they could provide insights into predicting the future. Newton's religious beliefs were largely hidden from the public until 1936, when Sotheby's auctioned off his theological manuscripts.
These writings eventually found their way into the hands of a Jewish scholar before being given to the State of Israel. Newton's unorthodox views on Christianity included rejecting the doctrine of the Trinity and opposing King James II's efforts to Catholicize universities. Newton served as an MP for the University of Cambridge. He was first elected in 1689 and served during the Convention Parliament. His second term was from 1701 to 1702, when he represented the constituency of Cambridge University. The famous anecdote about Newton's time in Parliament involves a single recorded request he made during his tenure. According to the story, while he was in Parliament, he requested that a window be closed because it caused a draft and disrupted his concentration. This request is often cited to illustrate his intense focus on his work and studies. Newton's parliamentary career was relatively quiet, and he didn't play a prominent role in political debates or activities. His primary focus remained on his scientific and academic pursuits. In addition to his pursuits in the realms of science and theology, Sir Isaac Newton had a hidden facet to his life, a profound fascination with the field of alchemy. Over a span of 25 years, he delved into the arcane world of alchemy, a quest that aimed to transmute common metals into gold and uncover the legendary philosopher's stone, which was believed to bestow immortality upon its discoverer. It is plausible that Newton's prolonged periods spent in the laboratory, engaged in these secretive alchemical experiments, exposed him to the dangers of substances like mercury. This potential exposure could offer an explanation for the mental breakdown he endured in 1693, a distressing period during which he harbored suspicions of conspiracy among his friends. This personal crisis persisted for a year and a half, and not long after, Newton made the decision to depart from his illustrious 30-year academic career at the University of Cambridge. In 1696, Sir Isaac Newton relocated to London to assume a new role, helping run the Royal Mint. At the time, Britain's finances were in disarray due to rampant practices like coin clipping and counterfeiting. Coin clipping involved individuals shaving off small amounts of precious metal from the edges of coins, typically made of silver or gold. Over time, this illicit practice led to a reduction in the weight and value of the currency, posing a significant threat to the nation's economy. Newton, with his background in scientific precision, approached his role at the Royal Mint with great dedication. During his tenure, he played a pivotal role in improving coin production and implementing security features like reeded or milled edges to deter coin clipping and counterfeiting. The practice of adding reeded edges to coins in the United Kingdom became more standardized during the 17th and 18th centuries. In the United States, milled edges became a common feature on coins starting in the late 18th century, with early American coins like the flowing hair and draped bust designs featuring reeded edges. Likewise, many countries across continental Europe also adopted milled or reeded edges on their coins in the 18th and 19th centuries. These innovations were instrumental in maintaining the integrity of coinage and preventing the debasement of currency, ultimately contributing to the stability of national economies. In his later years, Sir Isaac Newton's life was not without its share of controversies and disputes within the scientific community. One notable figure in these disputes was Robert Hooke, a fellow scientist who claimed to have inspired some aspects of Newton's groundbreaking theory of gravity. This assertion led to a prolonged and often acrimonious feud between the two prominent minds. At the heart of their dispute was Hooke's contention that some of his own ideas, particularly those related to celestial motion and gravitational forces, had influenced Newton's groundbreaking work on the laws of motion and universal gravitation. While the extent of Hooke's influence remains a topic of historical debate, it is clear that their interactions were marked by disagreements and professional rivalry. In response to these disputes, Newton has been accused of taking actions that some consider attempts to diminish Hooke's contributions. One such accusation is that Newton sought to erase Hooke's portrait from history, 
symbolically removing him from the annals of scientific recognition. These controversies and tensions between the two scientists serve as a reminder that even the greatest minds in history were not immune to the complexities of human interaction and professional rivalries. Despite these controversies, Newton achieved the legacy he desired. In 1705, Queen Anne of England knighted him during a royal visit to the University of Cambridge, forever immortalizing him as Sir Isaac Newton. As we draw the curtains on this chapter, we bid farewell to the remarkable journey of Sir Isaac Newton. On March 20, 1727, he peacefully departed this world, at the age of 84, finding his eternal resting place at Westminster Abbey. Inscribed in Latin on his tombstone are the words, Here lies that which was mortal of Isaac Newton. Yet, his influence transcends mortality, shaping the very fabric of our modern world. In closing, let us revisit the profound words that ignited our exploration. If I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. These words remind us that our pursuit of knowledge and progress is a collective endeavor, built upon the wisdom and discoveries of those who came before us. Sir Isaac Newton's enduring legacy beckons us to carry the torch of curiosity, innovation, and enlightenment. As we step forward into the pages that follow, may we remember that we, too, stand on the shoulders of giants. A link to the National Trust, Walsthorpe Manor, can be found in the description below.